hello and welcome to today's budget video today I'm going to be sharing my 2022 money goals um, I've seen lots of interesting videos where people have set their goals I've been watching quite a few videos <laughs> to see in the new year and it's really inspirational and it's a great community to keep you on track and give you positive feedback and support very supportive comments Everyone's journey is different and what's important to you might not be important to someone else, but if it's important to you, it's worth thinking about and worth trying for. So breaking out the new budget planner for 2022. I've been very slack <laughs> to start the new year. I haven't even done my January budget, which started on the 25th of December and I haven't actually written it. So I have written some goals though. So let's have a look at those. that little foot out of the way okay this is um Kirby Kirby Lewis is helping us today it's not Jerry for a change so our money goals for 2022 number one same as last year stay debt free that journey was incredibly hard work and it's still fresh so I'm still putting it as a goal whatever I'm gonna do with my money stay debt free number two save £2,000 towards the emergency fund. If you've watched my other videos, you'll know that I've got £3,000 in there now. My goal is £5,100. So I probably should have written £2,100, but £2,000 will do. I think I can do it if I stay on track. Number three is to save £1,000 in the VET sinking fund. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that we have less VET fees than we had this year but you just never know in 2020 I had a lot of vet fees I had I got Kirby in I think February the end of February he was a kitten and I bought him he didn't come from the shelter and he came with cat flu and he gave three two of my others so I've got four altogether including Kirby two of the others and Kirby all had cat flu the adults just needed to go to the vet and get antibiotics and they were okay. Kirby Lewis, he was terribly sick. He almost died. It was horrendous. I cared for him at home. And there was, you know, the pandemic had just started. I had to take him to the vet, but I couldn't go inside. I would have to ring the doorbell and leave the basket there and they'd pick him up and phone me. And there was blood coming out of his nose. It was so horrible. And... That cost like £800 or something. You know, he d did nearly die though. We had to talk about putting him to sleep. But thank God he made it. And then a few months later, Jerry, <laughs> Jerry being Jerry, he knocked a plant pot off the top of a cupboard, which smashed and cut Kirby Lewis's toe nearly off. So his toe had to get sewn back on. <laughs> that was like 350 pounds you can still tell he's got like a sideways toe let me see if he'll show you his sideways toe here and it doesn't have a nail so that was thanks to jerry smashing a plant pot and chopping off kirby's toe so things will happen and he also then got stung by a bee it was not kirby's ear touch wood he's been okay since then anyway so you just never know so i want to save a thousand pounds I know people ask, sometimes they leave a comment about pet insurance. So I did look at pet insurance when I just had two cats and it was going to be about £60 a month for the two cats. And I decided not to do it because I thought that's, you know, that's quite a lot if they don't need to go to the vet. Now I feel like most of them have got pre-existing conditions. So, so I, I still have chosen not to get it. Um, I don't know if it's the right decision or not, but I, I have made the decision not to get it it and just to keep saving up to cover vet expenses anyway <laughs> that was a long story about that goal number four is to complete the envelope savings challenge shared in my last video that it's about a quarter of the way there so yeah I should be able to save that I hope 
I need to get more regular about putting money into the envelopes. The, sad, the unfortunate thing is there's mostly bigger amounts that are left on it now. Number five is to build a £1,000 buffer in my account. So a buffer is money that is just in your account in case you have an unexpected expense. If a bill was higher than you expected it to be or, you know, if you had a vet fee or something and you didn't have enough in your vet sinking fund, you could use some of your buffer money. It's kind of like a mini emergency um, fund. That's how I think of it. So it's it was building and then I did use some of it towards the end of the year. So it's, I can't remember what it is to be fair. It's not too bad. It's more than £500 already is in there. I, I budget a buffer every month. Out of, I do a um, zero-based budget. So every piece of money gets allocated to something. And some of it I always budget to be a buffer. So it just sits in the bank account. Number six is to complete three no-spend months. Last year I wanted to complete at least two. And I did complete three I think it's a good thing for me because I am a spender. I do enjoy spending money, so it will be good for me to do three no spend months this year. Number seven is to set a no spend category each month. So what I mean by that is to, you know, say in January, I'm, I'm going to choose, I don't want to spend anything for my clothes sinking fund this month. Maybe in February, I don't want to spend anything from the cats sinking fund. Or I don't want to spend from the vet sinking round, although, you know, you never know if that's going to happen or not. So I'm going to try that. That's new. Number eight, I think I had this last year, is to be intentional with spending. So I've talked about the process I went through to decluttering my home on a large scale, and I still do decluttering. I don't want to bring things that I don't need into the home. I've also spoken about recently starting up a new hobby. And I want to be careful that the things I buy are things I will actually use. And they're just not going to sit around and not be used. And then the last one is to be positive and to celebrate small wins and successes. So especially when I first started my channel, I feel like <laughs> my positivity didn't shine through naturally. I'm quite a pessimistic person. And sometimes if I say that's not too bad, I actually mean that's really good. But it's just not the way that I say things or speak about them so I want to try and make sure I'm you know congratulating myself if something does go well and reminding myself that you know what two years ago you didn't have any of this and actually I watched a mama fur fur YouTube video I don't know if any of you watch her she's a finance um advice she's a finance she makes sorry she makes financial videos giving advice a lot of it's about investing in things which I haven't started to do yet but I know I should probably but she did a video the other day and it was just about reminding you that a lot of us that are on this journey we're we're a lot better off than many many other people even if we're struggling even if you know I've only got one income my income has to do everything there's no one to support me financially in my life it's all down to me and yes, my income is okay, but, you know, 50% of my income is basically bills without even including food or household or anything like that. So it is hard, but actually, I think she said a statistic, a statistic that, you know, if you've got enough money to be saving, if you've got the internet, if you've got a roof over your head and food on your plate, you're better off than 99% of people in the world. And it was it was quite good to watch, just to remind ourselves that, you know what, yes, it is a struggle. It's not always easy. I'd like to go spend money here, there and everywhere. There's so many things that I really need to save up for that it's overwhelming sometimes if I think of all the things that I need to really save up and try and do. But actually, I'm privileged to be able to do what I do do with my money. So... Yeah, number nine, be positive. I hope that you have set yourself some financial goals, some money goals. I just wanted to mention as well that I do set other goals for myself, but I just share my money goals on this channel because it's my budget channel. Um, but there's a, not a challenge, but a, I don't know what it is. It's just 
a thing a thing you can do that's called 22 for 2022 and it's where you make a list of 22 things that you would like to do in 2022 I've done it for the last couple of years with my sisters like we share them our list with each other and you know check in every now and then if we've achieved anything on our list or not achieve it and it can be all sorts of crazy things it can be fun things it doesn't have to be anything to do with money but it could be if you wanted it to um it's it can be anything like i watch one of my youtubers that i follow did a video the other day about hers and her sisters so i'll share that in the description box down below if you want to watch and have a look but you know, so you just think of 22 things that you would like to do throughout 2022. So one of mine is to have, enjoy a bubble bath once a month. Because I have a bathtub, I hardly ever have it, I always have a shower. But actually, you know, if I have a nice bubble bath, it's very relaxing and enjoyable. <clears throat> Another one of mine is to take an art or craft class each month. So I did a Christmas couple of Christmas craft classes online and I really enjoyed them and it made me decide that actually you know what I don't do a lot of eating out I don't do a lot of socializing so I thought you know what you do enjoy it spend some money not excessive and try try a new hobby try a new craft that you might enjoy or just to have the experience of doing it and then on my list yeah I did include like save 2000 towards an emergency fund and I put that I want to do some different challenge months. So it could be like this month I'm doing a gratitude journal. So 30 day gratitude journal. So it's got 30 prompts and each day you, you write about that. And to make me help me be more grateful for what I have. And I'm also doing the 30 day minimalist game challenge to declutter things every day for the month of January. And then... Some of the other ideas for other months might be, you know, take a photo a day for a month or do a drawing a day or a happiness one or a um, mindfulness or well-being. You know, there's millions of different 30-day challenges, exercise ones, food ones, all sorts. So I'm going to try and do one a month. I'm starting off with two, so let's hope January's a good one. Anyway, I hope that you have found my money goals interesting and it helps you to think about what's important to you this year with your finances. Let me know down below one of your money goals. Okay, thanks, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe if you're not already. Take care. Bye.